Alejandro, what were your conversations with um, Leonardo DiCaprio before you made Revenant? I remember the first time that I saw Leo, which was in uh, What's Eating Gilbert Grape, which I think is a fantastic movie, and the way he's portrayed a very, you know, vulnerable and fragile. There's something in Leo that I haven't seen in a long time, and I said to Leo, you know, I would love to see you that, as a fragile, vulnerable, to, to see the man that can be broke and not, you know, not, you know, to have obviously the complexity of the strength, but at the same time to allow yourself to play that vulnerability and, and be hit by, by loss, by weather, by... And he was very excited about it. And uh, he transformed himself physically. So in a way, he went into a diet. He left his hair grow like here, a bear that it was like almost like Santa Claus, like that. We were both eating our hair all day. <laughs> with fleas around and pasta soup from two mm -hmm. months before. And, you know, every kind of thing. What I like of Leo is that he is not just on, only an actor, but when he's with you, you know, his comments come from a filmmaker point of view. He understands the film, and so it's not about ego, vanity, or me, 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 no. So I appreciate that a lot. And in this film, differently from other films that he has done, he has almost no words, so few words. So all what he had to do was very difficult, which is to communicate and express or make you feel fear, anxiety, cold, sadness, uh, rage. So I mean, all those things that are easily easier to convey with words, than with the body language and the eyes. Is and Leo has this internal rhythm that is just like a machine, like, like something that is blending things. And I was very impressed by that. My son. The proper thing to do would be to finish him off quick. He should be cared for as long as necessary. I understand. Get away! Help! You've gone from making independent films to making, you know, very expensive film. This is the Revenant. It is. <laughs> and that's what made it. <laughs> okay, that's the issue. Uh, what, did, what went right, what went wrong? <laughs> what went right? Well, you will have to see what, if something went right, the, the film will have to say what went right. Um, uh, a lot of things went right. It's just that we have to make those things happen. To make it right, we have to, you know, we have to fight for them. When we went out there, the, 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 box, the, the, the body that we all signed was 1995. That was the room that we gave ourselves. And we knew that it was already dangerous because we could can, you know, confront problems. We knew that. Well, guess what? Problems came. We have to deal with them. And one of the major was that in, it was the hottest the winter in the, the history of Calgary, which changed weather seven times a day easily. And we were in February running out of, of snow. Mm. So I have the climax and the last scene, and it was bees and flowers in February. Now we were chasing ice, and it was really difficult. That impact 70% of the, and that obviously hit the post-production because then we were run out of time of post-production, yeah. so then it cost more money. So just in that, 70% of the budget was hit. It was our fault? No. Yeah. We respond correctly, yes. If not, we will let down the film and the film will not be what it is. Now, the, the film will have to speak by itself if it's worth it or not, but we did what we have to do. Every penny went into the screen and hopefully the people will see it. Thing that independent filmmaking, mm -hmm. in a way, has transported to TV. Mm -hmm. So that TV now is the home to good independent filmmakers. There's great yeah. stories, great things. And, and in a way, the screens are now full of mm -hmm. films that look like TV, just in a big screen. And I have an 18-year-old son mm -hmm. who's, in a way, I learn from him what he's getting from the world. And, and what have you learned from him? To make him go to a cinema, he has to have a big reason because almost everything he can find accessible immediately in, mm. in, in home. There's two things that are, I think, important. What has happened in the economy in the world is happening to the film itself. So the 99% of the 1% kind of division, now there's like super expensive films or just a very tiny budget film. Like the middle class or the middle budget films are disappearing. So all those kind of 
polarizing things that are happening is affecting film in a way, as, as a world mm. man kind of access to everything. Alejandro, who are you making your films for? Well, I, I, I think as a, as a species, we have to look at each other. I, I think if, if, I will say, if tomorrow uh, atomic bomb uh, finished the humanity and I'm the only one <laughs> staying alive, do I will make a film <laughs> to see myself? <laughs> I don't think so. You know what I mean? I think the bottom line, we are made to communicate and to express. That's what film is about. Mm -hmm.